so this is a revision video on DNA and DNA replication. There are four revision questions to complete, so pause, do the questions, and then we shall go through answers. Okay, so beginning with the basic structure of a DNA nucleotide. So let's go through what you should have. So it's a pentose sugar, that pentose is deoxyribose. Uh, and then ideally, I think it's always good practice to be able to number the carbons here. So they are the five carbons on the pentose. Notice I've put the hydroxyl group on carbon three. Uh, that's an important group um, for DNA replication, which we'll come back to. So uh, we also need to add phosphate group and then on carbon one, there is the nitrogen containing organic base and that can be one of four possibilities adenine guanine cytosine or thymine and just some things to note so the five carbon end is referred to as a five prime and the three carbon end referred to as the three prime and that's important when we're talking about the structure and replication so let's move on to the answers for question two and three. So question two, why is DNA structure described as anti-parallel? Well, if we look at this diagram of a section of double-stranded DNA, you can see that on the strand on the left runs from the five prime to three prime end, and then the complementary strand on the right runs from three prime to five prime. So because the strands in double-stranded DNA run in opposite directions, that's why it's described as anti-parallel. So let's have a look at question three. What feature of DNA makes it a stable molecule? So what you should be able to label is this, phosphodiester bond, so that's one example, but obviously they're all down the uh, either side of that double-stranded DNA and that m gives the uh, DNA a sugar phosphate backbone and it's that that makes the DNA very stable so you should know that it twists into a double helix and so that sugar phosphate back backbone forms almost like a barrier to the internal structure those uh, nitrogen containing or organic bases that sit then in the middle of the structure of DNA. And remember, they're really important because they are the genetic information. So it protects those bases from any damage. Um, and so it's that sugar phosphate backbone that makes DNA a stable molecule. So let's move on to DNA replication in the process. So I want you to be able to describe semi-conservative DNA replication in four steps. So what I'll do is I will go through some animations that describe those steps. So I won't provide any text initially, I'll just go through the animations and then I will provide the text at the end. So hopefully those animations help you see the process and understand it fully, but also for you to fill in any gaps uh, or anything you've missed in your description. So let's go through the process now. So what I've shown is an enzyme, and notice that the hydrogen bonds have been broken between bases. Now we have two new, or two original strands that have been separated, and uh, pay attention to what happens next. So there's complementary base pairing there, and next. So you see an enzyme is now catalyzing a really important reaction. We're going to focus on the right-hand strand to finish this off, and then we'll continue with the left-hand strand. Notice the direction in which that enzyme worked. 
on both strands. And so notice we're left with an original strand, two original strands, and two new strands that have paired with those original strands. So now I'll provide you with the four steps in uh, text form that you should have been able to write down. So that enzyme was DNA helicase, breaking the hydrogen bonds. So complementary base pairing occurred between free-floating DNA nucleotides. The enzyme was DNA polymerase that catalyzed the formation of those phosphodiester bonds between adjacent nucleotides. Remember, that's a condensation reaction. And you should have noticed that DNA polymerase is working in the five to three prime direction. So the active site of DNA polymerase is complementary to the three prime uh, or the hydroxyl group on the three prime carbon of a DNA nucleotide. And finally, really important that you recognize that you've got two identical strands that are produced and that those two strands contain one original and one new strand. So that is DNA and DNA replication. Remember to look in the description for pages in the textbook and revision guide that you can read uh, and try some of the uh, questions in the textbook and revision guide.